Hello everyone, this is Rayspace in X-Plane 12 where I'm dealing with some unfinished business as I'm trying the stock X-Plane 11 SR71 in X-Plane 12. And previously when I did that, I had a modification to the SR71 which apparently gave it rocket engines, more or less, uh, so that it could more easily get to Mach 3. It's actually very hard to get the SR71, the stock SR71 to Mach 3 for reasons I don't understand. And I'm going to try that out here. So we will see how that goes. But so now it's the stock X, uh, X Plane 11 SR71 as it should be originally configured, which is very hard to get to Mach 3 and especially 80,000 feet. That in particular is very difficult. And here's how it looks. Uh, one reason that I like it is at least the cockpit looks nice and realistic and everything. Not everything's clickable, of course. Uh, but I know there's also an, a new SR-71 available for x 12 that's payware, but I would really like it if this one worked. It comes, uh, it didn't come with, but I have a sound pack for it. Okay, up we go. Oh gosh. Uh, that's not good. Okay, 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 okay. Okay, well, an interesting thing happened. <laughs> um, right, okay, so uh, I, I seem to go up, retract my landing gear, and we lost lift. Can I get my landing gear down again? I'm guessing that's a no. Okay, let me try that again. So I lifted off a little bit too soon. I had been waiting on an SR-71 for flight sim, and unfortunately that has not come out, and now they're saying that it's only got to come out for flight sim 2024, and that was by Blackbird Sim, the somewhat inappropriately named Blackbird Sim, since they haven't given us a Blackbird yet. But all right. So, we're still with this one. <laughs> this is the only one I've got. And yeah, I'm just going to let it accelerate a little bit more this time. It is fully loaded with fuel. I'm here at Edwards Air Force Base, so it's not like the runways are short. Okay, 2.30, come on. All right, <laughs> definitely should not have to lift off at 230 knots, but I think it's safer under the circumstances. It's interesting how wobbly it feels at lower speeds too. That might be partly because of the large control surfaces, especially the all moving vertical stabilizers. So we have a mock indicator in the upper left and also on the dial here. It's a mean looking plane. It does take the plane a lot of effort to get up here. Probably it's just a matter of gaining, but there's a trade-off. If you gain speed early, then you're consuming more fuel at a less efficient altitude. But if you gain speed late, then you're not really being optimal. But yeah, a lot of the instrumentation isn't actually working, like the fuel pounds over there. Those, that should be ticking down. It's not. It's not reading the fuel at all. It was a bit sad that x 12 didn't come with a whole lot of experimental planes because x planes name sort of suggests that and it would be a really good place for it. I don't really feel like x plane is the best place for general aviation. It's a lot more interesting to fly experimental planes here because of the aerodynamic modeling 
not got the X-15. It's not got the space shuttle. Those were all in X-Plane 11 and big factors for why I got X-Plane 11 in the first place. But then they stopped working along the way as updates occurred because they were leftovers from previous versions. And so the X-15 didn't really work with the B-52 very well. And then the space shuttle. The space shuttle sort of did work, but obviously it isn't in here right now. Well, okay. We have to... I might have gone past Mach 1 a little bit too early. Probably a higher altitude would be better. But let me try and make that a little bit more definitive. We're at Mach 1.07. We really need to be past Mach 1.3. But I don't want to be going down anymore. We're only at 28,000 feet right now. But it'd be better to break Mach 1 at over 36,000 feet. Yeah, I think I'll prefer to go up hard and hold Mach 1 right now, because it's not really efficient right now. Well, there we've... Well, well, we suddenly lost the transonic drag, and so the climb rate p uh, spiked. Okay, let's try accelerating again. I mean, the patch or whatever that gave it additional rocket engines to give it a boost, uh, well, it was sort of justified. It's a tough plane to get to its rated speeds. Uh, I presume that it's supposed to be like that because I've been told X-Plane 12's aerodynamics are very good. Uh, the numbers are correct for the SR-71. I have personally checked that. So, what can we do? Okay, just for this plane, I'm going to turn down the, the exterior audio. There we go. Well, it's still loud. Okay, pass Mach 1, hopefully for keeps this time. It really pitches down quite a lot when we go past Mach 1, though. Hopefully we can accelerate, but it's really, really slow at accelerating here. So the question is, should I get the V-Sky Labs SR-71-TB? It's in an early access phase. It's in early access and last time it was updated was in January. So it hasn't been updated in 10 months. And they used the Laminar Research old SR-71 model, the one I'm flying right now, as the basis. It'll, I mean, they'll have a lot of nice features and all. And it has the F-Mod sounds built in, the ones that I got as a separate mod for this. But the V-Skylab one does advertise highly accurate climb and cruise profiles. So, I, I, I don't know, I haven't checked the real climb and cruise profile for this, but I can't believe that this is exactly accurate as we struggle to get past Mach 1.15 here. But maybe I should have broke, uh, broken Mach 1 at a higher altitude still. I don't know. Started dipping down at 36,000 feet here. The other option is, of course, to wait for the Blackbird Sim 1 in Flight Sim 2024. Okay, I think we've finally broken through Transatlantic stuff. Oh, but I don't want to decelerate though, watch out. But I think we can climb finally. I wonder if any version of the SR-71 actually simulates how it leaked fuel. Uh, actually, they used to get it up to a decent height, 30,000 feet, and then do aerial refueling, and then let it go to Mach 3. I don't know why it suddenly started going down sharply and also losing speed, or Mach number anyway. 
I've been trimming up a lot, but it doesn't seem to be working. I guess I'll try to go down a bit again. I didn't feel like I had enough trim authority there, like I had maxed out trim. Okay, Mach 1.4, still at 32,000. I tried going up, but I went back down again because it sure wasn't accelerating yet. But I think it'll work now. I think so. Mach 1.45 and going up. Now let me just not go up very fast though. So I'll just keep trimming down at this point. 500 knots indicated. Well, where are we? Utah. We're over Utah. Finally picking up speed, Mach 1.6. Well, now the climb rate is going down, but uh, speed is still going up, so that's okay. Mach 1.7. It's very touchy though. Alright, approaching Mach 2. 49,000 feet. And we're at Mach 2 at 49,000 feet. So, consider that a good altitude to do that at. So maybe it's operating right. I mean, maybe it's just a little bit finicky to get past Mach 1 initially. But we'll see. Let's get to Mach 3 and all first. If I had to go for benchmark, probably keep the indicated airspeed to 450. I'm just above that. I'm at 454 right now. I don't think I could keep it going very well We'd probably lose speed and altitude if we went too much lower. Yeah, basically it's about keeping a constant indicated airspeed because as you climb, the Mach number will go up. It's very touchy with the elevator trim right now. Well, we're at Mach 2.66. Mach 3 is pretty much assured, it's a question of whether we can get to 80,000 feet now. Okay, well above 60,000 feet holding 450 on the indicated airspeed isn't particularly useful. Because we're too close to Mach 3 anyway. So I'm gonna break Mach 3 here at 66,000 feet. I think. Uh, maybe a little bit higher. We're at 2.99. Alright, as you can see in the upper corner there, it's Mach 3. Also down here, Mach 3.01. And now we just need to climb. But we do that indicator speed about 435. So instead of 450, maybe 435 will work. But probably just keep it to 450 until you get to this altitude. Well, no more photo scenery above this area. My photo scenery runs out back there. I know there's a streaming photo scenery method, but I haven't got that installed yet. I'd like about twice the pitch trim steps that we seem to have. The, each click seems to do a little bit too much. Well, I've spiked to 80,000 feet. Um, well, I guess that's the best way to do it, honestly. Let me try and level out here and get back to Mach 3. But it's really tough. Oh, great. And it gives you a stall indicator up here. Going at Mach 2.77. <laughs> uh, it's not great. I don't think I can hold up here right now. I'm not thinking that 8,000 feet is worth it. 
really? I mean, 70,000 feet is pretty darn good, right? <laughs> well, the sun is setting on me here. If I really went through all the fuel, eventually I'd probably get to 80,000 feet, but it's not been... It's not been very convincing, let me put it that way. Let me try and break Mach 3 again. I'll lose altitude again and see what I can do. Maybe I... let's let's just get to Mach 3.3 as the last shot here. And then try to zoom up. Well, I'm in Canada now. Big Trout Lake, apparently. It's getting dark, but maybe I can only get to 8,000 feet in the dark or something. I don't know. Maybe it's a secret thing. Trying to accelerate here again. It's all about exactly what speed I should climb at. And I don't entirely trust that this particular version of the SR-71 is by the book on that. I do have the SR-71 manual, the actual flight manual. I haven't read it all the way. It's, th it's three volumes. <laughs> it's a lot. Uh, but, but I'm sure there are charts for the climbs in that. Uh, but I'm trying to feel this one out. Whoa. There was some lightning-ish sort of thing going on. Maybe that was the sun setting. No, the sun's still there. Oh, it's dipping down a lot. It just... If you... Just ignore it for a sec, you'll do crazy things. I mean, I can reach 80,000 feet. I just can't fly steadily at 80,000 feet right now. I'm trying to get the... Trying to coax it up so that it'll be steady up there. The problem is it tends to like to plunge down like a dart. Oh, it's gotten real wobbly now. About Mach 3.13, but it keeps going down sharply and up sharply at this speed. And that's real sharp. Okay, stop that. Well, I sort of give up at this point. It's not cooperating very well. What can I say? Mach 3, fine. 8,000 feet, not so much. I mean, I could get there, but I can't stay there. Well, that's a thing going on back there. Was that me? Well, yeah, I'm gonna leave it here. 8,000 feet. I can't get to 8,000 feet and Mach 3 at the same time, basically. And I can't really hold that 8,000 feet successfully. It's dark and I'm depressed. So maybe maybe I should get the V Skylab SR-71, maybe that'll be better. Maybe I'm just flying it wrong, but I've tried a few things by now. And it's just a little bit frustrating. Here, it'll get up they're all on its own but it'll lose too much speed yeah it's just too touchy so anyway wrapping it up here this has been uh, another foray into x-plane 12 hopefully i'll do more here especially before flight sim 2024 comes out and it occupies more of my time but yes for now Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.